Hello and uh, warm welcome to this week's edition of uh, Politics Today and in this programme we'll be discussing one of the top political stories of the summer and that's plans by the SNP up in Scotland, the Scottish Government, um, to propose the decriminalisation of hard drug use that's had uh, quite a strong response from our government in Westminster. So in this programme we'll be asking how should Christians respond to the decriminalisations of drug use in Scotland and the Scottish Government is calling for this to be spread out right across the UK. So joining me in this programme today I'm joined by Olive Snelling, Chairperson for the Christian Broadcasting Council. Lovely to see Olive, thank you. And uh, together with Alistair Scott, who's the UK uh, Director for Vision for Israel. Um, Olive, I'll start off with you. What do you make of this um, news story? That it's pretty much dominated the news headlines over the summer. And um, because Parliament's not in recess at the moment, there is a kind of limited supply of, of stories, political stories that we can unpack. But I thought this was a very significant one because we know that drugs destroy lives. And yet here we have a government up in Scotland that de wants to decriminalise the use of cocaine, heroin, um, because they don't want the, the victim uh, of those who are addicted to these drugs to be victimised. Um, what are your thoughts on this proposal? Well, you're asking quite a big question there. <laughs> I mean, it, it really is huge because decriminalisation of hard drugs sounds good. It sounds as if it's a policy that, that ought to apply. And yes, 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 that's a very good idea. But in practice, um, it's really quite something else. And this is the, this is the problem that faces the Scottish uh, government. It looks good on paper. Whether it's good societally is a, a, another thing altogether. How do we as Christians respond to it? Well, we certainly don't want people to be addicted to drugs. And the whole drug trade is such a terrible scourge on the face of the earth. I was just reading that one in five people incarcerated for drug offences. One in five people in our world are incarcerated for drug offences. It's absolutely mm. colossal. And you think of the damage that it does to, to lives, families, society, everything. And so, I mean, my response is, OK, well, let's talk about it. Let's, let's see what, you know, whether that makes sense or not. And uh, presumably, in this programme, we will seek to find some answers to that. Yeah, well, we need God's wisdom to do mm. that as well, because mm. uh, clearly this has happened in the kind of spiritual vacuum of uh, dismantling our Judeo-Christian heritage. Alistair, great to see you and have you back on Politics Today. Always good to see you on Politics Today. Yeah. Uh, and Alistair, um, talking about the discussion of the decriminalisation of hard drugs, effectively we have that with soft drugs at the moment, that uh, the government and the police are, are turning a, a blind eye to cannabis use at the moment, yeah. uh, which in my opinion is, is a big mistake because we see that this is leading to an increase in um, antisocial behaviour. Uh, uh, it's only now, it's got worse after the lockdowns and uh, we're also seeing as well with this is there been a huge increase in mental health problems. But now the Scottish Government, uh, the Scottish Nationalist Party are proposing that the UK should decriminalise drugs, not only in Scotland, but right across the board, across the United Kingdom. Um, what are your thoughts on, on such a policy? Well, to be honest, I, I'm completely against the idea of it. Uh, I, I guess I was a 60s boy <laughs> brought up in that time of the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and I, I played in a band myself, a rock band, and everyone around me was taking drugs and even, you know, I, I never did. Uh, but, but I saw the effects of drugs on people's lives, not, not only bringing in unbelievable fear through the kind of things they were seeing 
from drug abuse, uh, and, and so many of them did go on. I, I know I have one or two people who I knew personally who lost their lives as a result of drug over, overdoses, and I mean, they didn't intend to do it, but that's the danger of any kind of decriminalization of, a, of drugs, whether they're soft drugs, and you know, there's no such thing as soft drugs and hard drugs, because soft drugs lead on to the hard drugs. It's a, it's a spiral, upward spiral, which is, which is a dangerous place to be. So personally, I, I can see uh, it's kind of popular because we've got a generation now. I mean, I think the problem with uh, what do they call social drug taking, it's, it's as big a problem as we would have had in our era of taking alcohol. Um, and, and, you know, I talk to young people and, and they are quite happy to take a drug to go out and have a good time. They think they're having a good time. And I know from the personal experiences I had in my era that it, it doesn't stop at the social drugs, you know, because you want to get into something that takes you higher. And certainly in the music business, I was uh, very often approached because I looked, I probably looked like a drug addict because I had the long oh, hair. I've seen you on stage, you're very good at <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, but to, to answer your question, I, I would be totally against it going any further. And uh, I'm so glad that our government has stood up against it and said, no, they're not going to allow uh, the government or the SNP in Scotland to push this forward. But I'm sure there's going to be a battle which will rage into next month when, when they all come back into from the holidays and are back in, in, at their proper jobs uh, being politicians. I'm sure this is going to be a, a debate that comes through several times. And, and you know, it was similar with uh, the previous SNP leaders. They put a lot of pressure by being populist. You know, they were coming across uh, and talking to uh, things that the population like to hear with you know they make promises that they can't keep and that's the politicians pri <laughs> priority really um, so I'm, I'm sure if as Christians I really believe we need to be praying into this and Scotland Christians in Scotland if you know this is happening around you come on let's you know let God arise and his enemies be scattered Amen. Let's have a look at this excellent uh, video produced by our friends at the Christian Institute that looks into the announcement by the Scottish Government in the summer to announce their plans to decriminalise hard drug use. The UK Government has rebuffed the SNP's push to decriminalise all drugs for personal use. Since 2021, police officers in Scotland have been allowed to issue warnings to those caught with Class A drugs, including crack and heroin, instead of prosecuting them. But the Scottish Government is now calling for powers to remove possession as a criminal offence and to introduce drug consumption rooms where addicts can inject themselves without fear of arrest. A Home Office spokesperson gave a clear rejection to the demand. Illegal drugs destroy lives and devastate communities. We have no plans to decriminalise drugs given the associated harms, including the risks posed by organised criminals who will use any opportunity to operate an exploitative and violent business model. For more great content, like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. And uh, we're very grateful for the Christian Institute uh, for the use of that video that really highlights uh, this uh, government proposal up in Scotland to decriminalise hard drugs. Um, part of the argument that the Scottish government is, is making is that they don't want drug users who are addicted to drugs to be stigmatised and victimised as being criminals. Uh, and therefore they think, they believe that by decriminalising drug use, hard drug use, uh, means that it's safer and more easier to deal with. So what they're actually proposing as well is that they want drug uh, consumption rooms to be introduced for addicts who could inject themselves uh, without fear of arrest. It's all controlled and all monitored, uh, which again, in theory, sounds good. We also know that, for example, if the Scottish government uh, decriminalises hard drug use, then it shows that their crime statistics in terms of drug-related crimes go down. Um, the government, Scottish government don't really have to tackle this problem anymore because they're saying it, it's, uh, it's no longer a criminal offence. So 
this is not our problem. Um, but surely they've got this all wrong. Um, and then instead of actually addressing the issue of allowing people to have more drug use or free drug use without being labelled a criminal or having a criminal offence on them and setting up these drug centres, aren't they just encouraging more crime, more antisocial behaviour to a certain area, but also then encourages people that see the, the criminality label as a deterrent? Um, against taking hard drugs will no longer see any barriers whatsoever to taking uh, cocaine or heroin or whatever horrific hard drug or lab. I would mean, I'm, I would think that governments like the Colombian government, they must be absolutely jumping up and down with glee and anywhere where, where mm. drugs come from. And the Taliban. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it really is such a huge, it's such a huge issue and the, the number of deaths globally is so huge. Um, I don't think that taking a mild approach to, mm. to drug use really achieves anything in the long run. I think that it gives a signal to those who, who make gazillion mon months of money <laughs> out of it. It just encourages them all the more. And that, as far as the people themselves are concerned, um, I can see to a certain extent that allowing people who are addicted, say, to heroin to, to be able to inject themselves without um, having to go and steal or kill or whatever to, in order to get the money to do it, that obviously that is a, is a point. But I don't think that that addresses their problem mm -hmm. of addiction at all. And so uh, you know, what we're not doing mm. in this country and in Scotland is addressing the problem of addiction <laughs> in the first place. And that is a much, much bigger, much bigger thing. Why do people seek drugs? Well, I suppose it's easy in some ways to, to, to think, oh, well, it doesn't really matter, but it does, mm. hugely. And the number of deaths that result from it, absolutely enormous. Yeah. And, and Alistair, according to my notes here, um, according to news reports, um, Scotland has the largest number of uh, drug deaths anywhere in Europe. Uh, and surely the problem is more about confronting drug addiction and allowing people to take hard drugs without fear of being criminalised. Um, share with us how, for example, drugs uh, destroy lives, but also destroy communities and families as well. I mean, it's uh, a hard drug use is absolutely horrific. Yeah, it's like Oliver was just saying, you know, it is a major problem uh, and, and there are so many. I mean, I was reading the statistics and we maybe touch on it later. The amount, I mean, Scotland's got the highest proportion of deaths by drugs throughout Europe and probably th not quite throughout the world, but certainly in Europe. And it's, it's really quite a small population with a very, very high number of deaths. And I've seen it even, you know, in outreaches when you go into certain communities and you, you know, you're going out with the gospel to talk to people uh, and you'd go into playgrounds uh, and, you know, where, where you're handing out tracts to people and you'd see the, the drug abuse there. I mean, I remember a child about to go down a slide and, you know, we, we saw a, a, a needle, you know, which had been used for drugs been poked in so intentionally to in, injure somebody and a child. Ah. And things like that are happening in these sort of areas. So we, like, like Olive said, you, you, you don't um, put a plaster over the problem or, or, or you know, pretend it doesn't exist, give it a name which is, sounds nice. You deal with the problem. The root of the problem is why are people taking drugs? And it's usually because people have no hope. Mm. Why do they have no hope? Maybe they have lost their jobs. Maybe they've, they've been, you know, broken up families. And as, as believers, as Christians, we should be dealing with those situations as governments. We should be uh, aiming to reach out to, to the, the cause of the problem and not decriminalization. That means, you know, I, I can only see death rates going up and up and up because, yes, I agree, it's better to have a safer place for people to inject themselves, but it's even better that they don't inject themselves. Uh, and so, so it's uh, getting in, uh, spend the money re-educating people uh, because I haven't seen one situation of drug abuse going up the ladder, ending up with something good. It usually ends up with, with mental illness or total death, suicide and so on, or unexplained deaths because it may be not intended to be suicide, but it's ended up taking somebody's life. So, um, yeah, I, I think it affects communities because there are people who, who are good, law-abiding people who get wrapped up in, I've seen it myself, you know, where you've gone out at night, 
just on a walk somewhere and you've got drug dealers uh, selling drugs to people and you feel threatened and, and you know you're threatened because you're walking into their patch. Um, and that's, that's a terrible uh, indictment on any community. And you know, we can label communities as good or bad, but in every community, whether you're the wealthiest community, in an area I was living before, which was a wealthy community, the drug addicts were at the school gates because they knew the kids had money to spend. So they would I initially give them, because I, 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 as a pastor, I would meet these kids in the streets on a Friday night, Saturday night. And initially they would offer them the drugs for free so that they get addicted and then they have to come back and yeah. spend money from there on in. And they knew these kids were belonging to millionaires or you know wealthy people working in London and the stock exchange or whatever, and they had access to money. So it's a, it's criminal, it's a criminal event, <laughs> and we're talking about decriminalizing. Uh, what is a criminal event? Uh, as Olive said, the drug dealers must be thinking, "Come on, Scotland, we'll pay you money to get this one across the uh, uh, across the, the government." Uh, but we must make sure it doesn't happen. I mean, I don't know, the only way we can do it is by praying because, uh, and, and of course, talking to our MPs and saying, look, we're for what the government stand is now. Let's not decriminalize drug, not, not only hard drugs, I'm saying any drugs. Um, yeah, that's my mind. My, my. Yeah, so according to the uh, Christian Institute and also the um, Spectator, I got this one, this information from the Spectator, the, uh, the Scottish Nationalist Party uh, government, the SNP, uh, came to power in 2007. They said they reported 455 drug-related deaths recording in Scotland. Then after 10 years of the SNP's um, role in government, the figure reached 934 deaths of hard drugs. And by 2021, the figure had reached 1,330 per year. Um, and it's also now gone up to somewhere in the region over 1,092 deaths per year purely on drug use. So uh, in the time that we've seen the Scottish nationalists have um, power in Scotland, we've seen that there's been a, a, uh, an increase in hard drug use. So all these policies that effectively the Scottish government are trying to bring about to eradicate this problem are actually making the situation far worse. Do you think this has come out of a kind of uh, moral spiritual gap? We're living in an age where we've, uh, as a nation and a society, we've uh, abandoned our Judeo-Christian heritage. Uh, our, our government and society and our businesses are pursuing woke causes. Uh, and it's the fact that the, we the gospel is then weakened. There's no understanding of what's right and wrong. Um, and then the government wants to turn a blind eye to these things or just encouraging ordinary people to take drug use and say, look, this is fine. I I as long as you have this and you're not actually supplying it, you can take hard drugs. I mean, what kind of message is that sending to a future generation uh, who's already have, uh, especially in Scotland, a massive drug addiction problem? Well, it is a massive, a massive uh, addiction problem. And I know that they quote the fact that by reducing uh, or decriminalizing drugs, that this reduces the spending on, on criminal justice um, and recidivism. Well, I mean, that's such a ridiculous argument. I mean, that, is that the way to reduce recidivism? It certainly isn't. And what I feel uh, so strongly about, I mean, you said um, to address the problem societally, but the answer to that is how? Mm. And you know, this is something which, uh, we, with which we are faced now that is so gargantuan that the, the how bit is, is almost impossible to contemplate. I mean, you're talking about societies, groups, um, neighborhoods, and that this happens, the, the, the highest rate of drug use is usually in poor areas. Mm -hmm. Um, and how, you, how so? How are you going to improve that? Improve the whole, the whole way in which people live? Well, of course. But how? And this is the thing. So I mean, as Christians, when we come t towards um, our prayers and pr praying for the government and and interacting with the government with the um, the powers that be, that we have got to be a lot more vociferous. I mean, not not only a lot more. I mean, very. This is something with which up with which we cannot put. Mm. But wouldn't uh, you say that, um, Olive, that the, probably the root cause of this is the breakdown of the family? 
Uh, and the fact that we've seen uh, consec uh, consecutive governments really from the 1960s on to the 70s and the 80s um, really kind of belittle marriage, belittle the nuclear family um, with the kind of ultra liberals wanting to actually break up the nuclear family um, it is pretty much kind of responsible for this drug problem that we have today because that is the moral framework um, that children are brought up in a loving family um, and with it as well comes the kind of moral values, the Christian moral mm -hmm. values that are put in place. Um, these are being torn apart by divorces and uh, family breakups that are causing misery and mayhem. Uh, children then feel rejected and unloved um, and then turn to drugs as a, as a way of escaping. Um, and, and if the government did more to support traditional marriage and families, um, then surely we'd see a reduction in the number of children and young people who are addicted to drugs now. That would be a huge start. Mm. That would be a very good place to start. They've got to do something. I mean, this is absolutely, uh, it goes without saying that something has got to be done. But OK, again, I'm saying what? And, and so what, what we, our response as Christians should be, is that we must not remain silent. Mm. And we have got to stand up um, yeah. in the marketplace yeah in the public square and shout. I mean, we, we really, really, really do. And this is the only way in which you're actually going to get any, uh, any reaction out of a government. And the government uh, is no doubt as perplexed as we are as to how you actually achieve that because it's a societal problem. It's a behavioral problem. This is something which you, you cannot just correct by, by ch changing a few laws. You, you can't. And what the problem is, is that we are living in a moral vacuum. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so how do we do, what do we do about that? Mm -hmm. Well, we all, we all are all individuals, we all have our constituencies, and we also have a voice, and that's the one thing that I'm feeling more and more and more, we are not to shut up. Exactly. We are to speak out, we are to make, go on and on and on and on, and you get so fed up with some people banging mm -hmm. away about what, whatever it is that they're, they're on about that they sort of hit you over the head to just to stop you but you know you've got to do something yep. and I think that we've got to make this an absolutely number one issue absolutely mm. and, and Alistair um, uh, I remember being at university in the uh, kind of 90s and, and cannabis uh, use was uh, was very widespread mm. and I even being invited to some friends home and they all, all smoking a kind of joint. I was the only one that said, no, I don't want this. Um, I, I was into my sport. I got my strong mm. Christian convictions. I don't want to go anywhere near it. Um, but we've also seen, for example, during lockdown, the increase of uh, cannabis use amongst young people, antisocial behavior in, in parks. And, and now you just walk down the street, you can smell that yeah. horrible yeah. smell. And it's a revolting smell because it's so strong. Um, that uh, what we're seeing is the government has effectively decriminalized the use of soft drugs um, and going an approach that will allow soft drugs but will criminalize hard drugs but surely there's an argument to say that those that some people who start on soft drugs start soft drugs and that leads them on to hard drugs and so therefore the government's response should be cracking down on all drug use okay. Um, because I think this is a, a huge pandemic amongst mm. uh, young people. It leads to kind of mental health problems. Um, and, and, uh, and in many cases, they're not actually fit for work because their mind's so shot okay, to bits. Exactly. Um, so surely the government should be adopting the Rudolph Giuliani approach when he was mayor of New mm. York of a zero tolerance approach. By cutting down on small crimes, small drug use, you stop the big Bigger crimes ones. of the big drug use. And actually to be tough on this, but also then to provide more help for those who are addicted to actually get out of that vicious circle mm. of being addicted to hard drugs. Yeah. I mean, I was just lo looking at those figures you just read out and the escalation, you know, it, it's, it's huge in, in such a short time, you know, 455, then in 10 years it was uh, 900 odd, and then within four years it went from 900 odd to 1,300. And that's know? just in Scotland alone. Yeah, just looking at that, well, Scotland is where the major, we're dealing with 
at this time, so it's important to look at that because on a chart, that would be horrendous. You know, if we were talking about inflation <laughs> and the charts we see about inflation, this would outdo those inflation charts we've been seeing. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I think to talk about decriminal, and remember, I mean, I, uh, in Scotland, it started off, it's already started off with the police being instructed in Scotland, not anywhere else, but in Scotland, not to arrest people who are using hard drugs, but to warn them. So, you know, it, it's this step-by-step -step approach. You can see the first step is, hey, let's, let's be soft on these guys. The second step is, hey, we're just not going to call it a criminal offence anymore. Uh, for what reason? Because it's not going to help their society. Uh, yeah, I mean, gather them together. You have to do everything. Like Oliver's just said, we can't ignore the problem. And I'm not saying it's a simple problem to, to, to solve, but you can't ignore it because if you just pretend it's not there, it'll, it'll start taking younger. I know from my own life, uh, you, you made me feel really old talking about <laughs> being in university in the 90s. <laughs> I was long gone by then. Um, I can remember the, the starting point of ages where people were taking drugs, which were probably 20 plus and, and soft drugs mainly, uh, and then it gets harder. But now kids are taking drugs on the streets age 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, and, and so what are they going to be like in 10 years time when they're only 23, when they should be at their peak of their career uh, walk, they're going to be getting towards being cabbages. So how can you even contemplate making decriminalizing such an offense as this? It's Absolutely. Oh, if we have less than two, uh, two minutes of the program, but maybe we should look to the example of someone like um, Jackie Pullinger in Hong mm. Kong oh. and the great work that Wonderful. she and her, and her team are doing to help deal with the uh, heroin problem there in, on the streets of, uh, of uh, Hong Kong. Mm. Uh, and so shouldn't the church play a wider role in this by helping addicts um, cope cocaine addicts, hard drug addicts, to get off their drug addiction and also to give them Christ as the answer and the solution to this yep. problem because Jesus is the only answer to this. Yep. It is. I've been to Jackie Pullinger's place in Hong mm -hmm. Kong and we've been right out to the, set, uh, the middle of the, of, of the walled city. Absolutely fantastic experience with all of these young people praising the Lord. I mean, mm. absolutely fantastic. And the answer to that, of course, is that that is the only answer. And the thing is that Prayer achieves a tremendous amount and, um, well, it just does. I was going to tell you a story about myself being coming off cigarettes. Somebody just prayed for me. Oh, this is such a nuisance for Olive. Please would you stop it? And I lost the desire to smoke instantly. Wonderful. Uh, Olive and Alistair, thank you so much for being my guest on this week's Politics Today. And I want to thank you for watching this programme home. I think the church has a big wake up call in this country Agreed. to realise that there is a massive problem, especially in Scotland, but also across the country regarding hard drug use. Uh, we need to pray for this issue, but also pray and help those that are addicted and get back to core family values, such as supporting marriage and the family. So thank you for watching this week's edition of Politics Today.